Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Robin Lewis. I am a naturopathic physician practicing in Vancouver, British Columbia. And today I wanna to talk to you about one of my absolute favorite therapies, and that is PRP therapy. So PRP therapy, AKA platelet-rich therapy, falls under the category of orthobiological medicine. So orthobiological medicine are therapies that are used from our own body. So they are made up by us and they are used to speed up the healing process. Another example of an orthobiological medicine would be something like stem cell therapies. Now stem cells are maybe something that you're a little bit more familiar with and they're used to grow new tissues, but they do come from us. Now PRP isn't the same as stem cell therapy and it's far less invasive, but it can achieve similar results. PRP therapy first started getting used decades ago for things like wound healing and dentistry. Now it's being used for a lot of different things. Those things include, well, for example, in dentistry, it's being used for things like bone grafts. In surgery, it can be used to speed up fracture recoveries and improve the healing after your surgical protocol. It has actually been used a lot in aesthetics, so for the appearance of fine lines and improving the health of your skin. It's also used a lot for hair regrowth. It's even being used in places like a pee shot, if you've ever heard of it, which is helpful for sexual dysfunction in males and females. And lastly, it can be used as an alternative to something like surgery for a lot of joint pain. And that, to be honest, is my specialty. That's what I use it the most in practice for. And it has been an absolute game changer for me and my patients. So I will admit I am a little bit biased because I do use it in practice, especially for more sports medicine type of injuries. But I just wanted to mention that so you had an understanding of where I'm coming from and why I might use more examples that pertain to things like ligament and cartilage injuries and stuff like that. So how can one therapy be used for so many different things? Well, that's what I'm going to explain to you today. I'm gonna first tell you what is PRP therapy and how it's being used. I'll walk you a little bit through what the procedure looks like. And my goal is by the end of today, you have a basic understanding of what PRP therapy is. So you can make a decision on whether or not it might be the right therapy for you and your health and wellness needs. In order to understand why PRP therapy is so useful for so many different things, you need to first understand what it is. So the platelets that we're trying to concentrate in the blood, and I will later go over what that looks like as far as a procedure goes, the platelets themselves are really the key component in the PRP therapy. They are really notorious for releasing things like growth factors and healing factors necessary to repair damaged tissue. For example, one of the things that platelets are known to do is promote the growth of new blood vessels. This is really important because lack of blood flow to an injury or damage to the blood vessels in the area are a main reason why certain injuries do not make a full recovery. The platelets are also known to help promote the growth of collagen. And if you go to my video from last week, you will understand that collagen is a key component for improving the structural integrity of things like your joints and your skin. So those are just two of the things that the platelets are known for doing. And that's why they can be used for such a wide variety of things, because in general, it promotes healing. You also want to keep in mind that platelets are a part of our natural healing process regardless. So for example, if you're playing soccer and you injure a ligament in your knee and it gets all red and hot and swollen and everything starts flooding the area, one of the main first stages of that healing process is forming what's called a platelet plug. So the platelets will get brought in through your blood flow. They will form a plug and they will start to release the healing factors and the growth factors. So they are a necessary first step to any type of healing naturally already within your body. Now I won't go into the later stages of healing, 
but it is important to know that platelets are part of the very first stages of healing. And that is kind of why it can be used for such a wide variety of things. Because to be honest, the healing process in the different parts of your body isn't really that different. So for example, your skin, your joints, they all kind of start the same way. Yes, they form different tissues in the end, and that's where the later stages of healing come in, but the initiation of that healing response is the same. So your body is already designed to respond to these platelets. So that's why when we concentrate platelets and we very intentionally put that in a place of injury, you're going to get a natural healing response that your body is already designed to do. Now, when it comes to what to expect from your PRP therapy and the procedure itself, there are a few key points that I want you to understand. PRP therapy follows what's called the rule of three. So generally speaking, it takes about three days after you've injected it to fully absorb into the surrounding tissue. It takes three weeks to start forming new tissue and it lasts for about three months. Now, I don't want you to get confused when I say it lasts for about three months. I don't mean that after three months, you're back to square one. So it's not like when you put a medication like a steroid into an area where it's only effective for as long as the drug is in that area and then you're back to square one. PRP therapy, because it's trying to stimulate the regrowth of new tissue, you will always have that new tissue after those three months. So unless you re-injure the area and tear it again, that is permanent. I also want you to be aware that it's often not a one and done type of injection, especially when you're using it for joint rehab and chronic pain and aesthetic purposes like hair regrowth. The reason for this is you will get a healing response that plateaus around three weeks. And so whatever percentage of regrowth that you get in those first three weeks does tend to plateau. Yes, it's still in your system for about three months, but the majority of the healing and the response that you're gonna see peaks at about three weeks. So if you're not 100% happy with where you're at, say that ligament isn't 100% pain-free or your hair hasn't fully regrown, then you're gonna wanna do that procedure again to get the next bit of percentage out of that therapy. So depending on the extent of the area and the health status of a person, you could be a very short, like one and done type of injection, or you could require multiples because healing doesn't always happen completely the first time around. You also want to note that the rule of three is of course talking about the average person. So someone's healing capacity really does depend on things like your age, your health status, your nutrition status, your activity levels. So you can think about it this way. The PRP starts the process, but your body finishes it. So if you're 80, you're not necessarily going to heal like a 20 year old. Of course, there are ways in which we can optimize that healing process, but it is important to note that if you eat whatever you want, smoke whatever you want, drink whatever you want, PRP isn't magic. It's not going to magically repair you as if you are treating your body right. So it does require your own body's machinery to do the work. So if your health status is really poor, your response to PRP therapy will also likely be pretty poor. That also brings me to my next point. Not everybody is a good candidate, or at least not right now. So for example, if you have uncontrolled diabetes or you're a cigarette smoker, your capacity to heal is drastically reduced. So you're gonna wanna have a conversation with your doctor about getting those things under control before you engage in PRP therapy. Because at the end of the day, you wanna make sure it's effective and reduce those barriers to healing. And that's also why you want a doctor who's going to be asking questions about your overall health status before signing you up for PRP therapy. 
because you want to make sure that you have the best chance possible of responding to this therapy. So it's not to say that you would never be able to receive this therapy, but you do kind of want to get those under control first so that you're just not wasting your money with it. All right, last thing I want to talk to you about what the actual procedure of getting PRP looks like. Of course, this is going to be varied depending on what it's being used for. But if you're talking about a out of hospital procedure, generally speaking, this is what it's going to look like. First, you're going to start with a blood draw. So your doctor is going to grab some blood anywhere, usually from 10 cc's or 10 milliliters to about 60 on average. And then that blood is going to be combined with an anticoagulant. So something to stop it from clotting. And then that is going to be put into a centrifuge, which is a piece of technology that will spin the blood and separate it into three main components. The very bottom most component, because it's the heaviest, so it sinks down to the bottom, is the red blood cells. The middle is the PRP, which is the platelet-rich plasma. And then the top is the platelet-poor plasma. So you don't want those other two parts. You just want the PRP. And now you have a nice concentrated amount of platelets that can be then used to inject into the area you want to heal. So this is important to understand because it is next to impossible, it is impossible to react to your own blood. So the PRP itself is a very non-reactive substance. Of course, you can react to the other things being used in the procedure, like the anticoagulant, like what your doctor's using to maybe numb the area beforehand, or the substance that they're using to sterilize the area. But otherwise, PRP is considered pretty safe because it is your own blood. So the chances of having a really huge reaction to your own blood is very, very low. So is it painful? Yes, generally speaking, it requires things like blood draws and injections. So needles generally have a little bit of pain associated with them. Is it dangerous? Well, it depends on where it's being put. So the injection technique of your practitioner really does matter so they know where they're going and how to put things in the correct place. But otherwise, the substance itself is what I mean by being considered quite safe. So that's really all I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I wanted to give you a brief little history about what PRP is being used for, why it's being used for these things, and if you're to sign up for a procedure, generally what you're signing up for. And I hope that this has really geared you up with the basic understanding that you need to go on and now have an educated discussion with your doctor. I thank you for listening from the bottom of my heart and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.